Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to get started with MongoDB as a Docker container. So we're going to see how to deploy MongoDB with Docker and how to interact with it. But before we do, I want to give a special shout out to DigitalOcean, who is a sponsor of this particular episode. Um, so in case you're unfamiliar with DigitalOcean, it's by far the easiest platform to run and scale your applications. Um, so DigitalOcean offers a variety of services ranging from object storage, to scalable compute services, all of which having a very affordable and easy to understand pricing model. In case you'd like to get started with DigitalOcean, you can actually take use of my promotional code and get yourself $100 credit. Uh, just go ahead and go to do.co slash polyglot and you'll get $100 credit that'll get you quite far when it comes to their services. So when it comes to the core content of this particular video, the assumption is that you already do have Docker installed and it's running. Um, we're gonna get we're gonna go ahead and download the MongoDB image and we're gonna go ahead and deploy it and, and start to work with it. Um, so you'll notice that I do have my terminal open on my Mac. The first thing that we want to run is we want to say something like Docker pull Mongo. Now their official image isn't MongoDB on Docker, it's just Mongo. Now, typically, you probably wouldn't want to get the latest tag, which is what we got with it with the Mong Docker pull Mongo command, uh, especially with the database. You want to be in charge of what particular version you're using at any given point in time. So the latest, whatever that may be, it's probably not the best idea. It may be fine for prototyping, but in, in most circumstances, you're going to want to specify that version. So I'm going to say Docker pull Mongo, and I'm going to specify the tag. So I'm going to specify the version of MongoDB. In this case, I'm going to say 4.0.4. .4. So if you want to see what was actually installed here, so it was just an image, and we actually just downloaded two images, but we can say Docker images, and that'll list all of the images that are currently um, downloaded on your computer. Um, so in my case, I have not only just Mongo version 4.04, .04, but I also have Mongo latest. So I have two different versions of Mongo uh, within my Docker um, installation, but we're gonna be focusing on Mongo 4.0.4. Uh, .4. Now, now that we have the image, we can go ahead and, and start to worry about deploying that image. So I'm gonna say Docker run, and I'm gonna say hyphen hyphen name I'm going to call it MongoDB. I don't have to specify a name, but I am, so that way I can keep track of it. And I'm going to say Mongo colon 4.0.4. .4. And what that's going to do is it's just going to start running MongoDB. And you can see it running in the background. Um, it's not really the background, but the foreground. But it's kind of I'm getting a live output of the logs as they happen. Uh, typically, maybe you might not want to run it that way. You probably do want to run it in the background or, it, or otherwise known as detached mode. Uh, you might want to specify the ports that you want open so that way your applications can communicate with MongoDB. If we wanted to do, let, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. I'm going to say Control C. Uh, and that's going to exit out. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a similar command. So I'm going to say docker run hyphen D for detached mode. I'm going to specify the ports that MongoDB uses for its applications. So it's going to be 27. 017 and it's going to be a port range so it's going to go to 27019 um, so that's the host uh, and then the container ports is going to be the same 27019 or 07 27019 again I'm going to specify the name I'm going to say MongoDB and I'm going to specify the actual uh, image that I want to use so Mongo 4.0 04. And again, you, you don't have to specify the tag. I personally think it's a good idea to speci uh, specify the tag when it comes to databases because of how important they are. Um, but that's that's totally up to you. So I'm going to run it. Uh, you're going to see that there's a conflict because I didn't properly stop my container the last time I ran it. So if I want to say Docker PSA, uh, you can see that that Mongo instance is still running. Um, so I can say Docker stop MongoDB, which is what I had called it. I'm going to say docker uh, remove MongoDB, which is, again, what I had called it. Uh, and then finally, if I wanted to run it again, I would say, again, docker run uh, detached mode. I would specify those ports. I would specify the name. It doesn't have to be MongoDB. It could be whatever I want. But I'm going to hit enter. 
and you can see this time around that it did run. Now, instead of creating a full-blown kind of web application to play around with Mongo, uh, what we can actually do is we can actually log into this instance in the interactive terminal. Um, so we do have Mongo running, so I can say uh, Docker PS, uh, and you'll see that I do have Mongo running. It's what I've called it, MongoDB. So using that information, I can say Docker uh, execute, so EXEC hyphen IT for interactive terminal, MongoDB, which is my name, and then I'm going to use the bash uh, shell when I log in. And you can see that now instead of using my terminal on my Mac, I am now using the terminal within the container itself. Um, so it does not look at all like my Mac. It's actually, I believe, a Linux inst instance. So when I'm logged in, I can execute all of the typical Mongo commands that I, that I would expect if I were, if I were running it locally. Um, so for example, I can run Mongo. That'll enter me into the MongoDB shell client. I can say something like show DBs. Uh, I don't. I just have the default DBs as of now. If I wanted to, I can create a new one. So I can say use, and I'll say the Polyglot Developer. Uh, now I'm using the database, the Polyglot Developer, which doesn't have anything in it as of now, but it will. Um, so let's go ahead and worry about maybe uh, uh, creating a collection and actually saving something to this database. Um, so in order to create a collection, I need to first create some data uh, for a collection, and it'll kind of get saved all at once. So I'm going to say db dot, and then my collection name that I want to use, I'm going to call it people, and I'm going to say save. And what do I want to save in there? I want to save an object, so some, some BSON, or, or in our case, it's going to look like JSON. Uh, first name, I'm going to call it Nick. I'm going to say last name, Raboy, and I'm going to hit enter. Um, and it inserted my results. So if I wanted to, I could say db.people.find. Um, I'm not going to specify any criteria. I'm just going to use a blank object, and it should return everything. Um, and you can see that it returned my name. Uh, so let's go ahead and add another one. So I'm going to say db people.save. I'm going to say first name. This time it's going to be uh, Maria. Last name, Raboy. I'm going to hit enter, which saves it. I'm going to say db.people.find. Again, I'm not going to pass in any criteria. This time around, it actually found uh, two records. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could query uh, for just one. Let's go and say db.people.save, not save find. Um, I'm going to specify a first name. So it's going to return all documents that meet this criteria. I'm going to say it has to meet uh, Maria. Hit enter. Uh, this time around, it only found one, which is like it should. Uh, so let's go ahead and quit out of this. Um, exit. We're back at the container shell. If I want to exit out of the shell, I can say exit. Uh, but my container is still running because remember it's running in detached mode. Uh, if I wanted to stop it again, I could either force stop it all in one go or I can uh, uh, do a safe shutdown. I can say docker stop uh, mongodb and then docker, uh, if I want to remove this stopped container, I would say docker remove mongodb. Uh, so this is just a very kind of intro example. So it's uh, we downloaded mongodb. Uh, so Docker image, we deployed that image, we interacted with that container. Um, this could easily be deployed anywhere, uh, which includes DigitalOcean. So DigitalOcean does support uh, container deployments. Um, so uh, whatever, whatever you want, it makes it very easy to interact with MongoDB without having to have it at the root level of whatever operating system that you're using.